the Young Thug YSL RICO trial has resumed with the jury. Agent Bernie testifies on phone records that put defendants around the general area of the crime scene to meeting up at Thug's condo. Defense lawyers cast doubt on the accuracy of the records and continue to throw Woody under the bus. Yet today was pretty interesting with the phone records. For some reason, they never got Yacht Gotti's phone records, which is weird because he was in the car, apparently. He's accused of murder. What are we doing? Same with Shannon Stowell. His phone records are missing for some reason. I don't know. Hit subscribe on channel membership. Let's go, boys. First look at Thug on day 143. Got the white suit on. Look like he going to church. All right, first witness is a cell phone data expert, Agent Bernie, phone tracking and who called who the night of the Diamond Thomas murder. It was one of those incidents, the January 10th, 2015 murder of Diamond Thomas. It was. And after conducting your analysis, did you ever generate a report? I did. Your Honor? Yes. I, I don't mind it being admitted to help the agent testify, but I will have a continuing witness objection. It was made for purposes of this trial. All right, I understand. Is this, is this just for demonstrative purposes? Your Honor, we could. Can we address that at a later time? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Why isn't his mic on? Wow, look at this demonstrative. This is what Brian Steele was objecting to, I would imagine, putting the names next to the numbers. In relation to cell tower location. Yeah, so again, uh, this is a list of all the cell phone numbers and associated users that were provided to me by law enforcement for each of the devices. And then you can see um, the provider for each of those devices listed there as well. First one is Kenneth Copeland, the morning of the murder. That was the time period. So this is between 6.37 and 7.26 p.m. So 6.37 a.m. to 7.26 p.m. That's what's shown on this slide here. Each slide will have a slightly different time period. The phone number for the activity listed is gonna be in that top left-hand corner there. So again, this is a phone number ending in 5991 associated with Mr. Copeland there. We have the crime scene for this homicide location. Um, we have a residence. Um, it's gonna be listed as a yellow box uh, with the letters Q, R listed here. And then uh, the, a green store. This is a Sprint phone. Um, so each of these black dots are Sprint cell phone towers. Is there any data with the phone associated with Kenneth Copeland that places him in 330 McDaniel Street at 7.22 p.m.? No, uh, again, we have 701 uh, down in here and then 724 in this general area here, 725 now this tower, 726 now this tower and sector here. So uh, again, if the question was at 722, I would say the device was you know, somewhere in this general area down here. So you see how he has to say general area because obviously they don't have exact, pretty much a wide area of the direction of the tower. But this is Kenneth Copeland. He's having accused of the murder. So I guess we're trying to show the jury that he wasn't there. Can you describe for the jury where that tower and sector is for this 728 phone call? Yeah, we see it here. Again, it points towards this tower and this sector here. So again, the tower is located right along this I-20 on the south side. It provides coverage in this general area over here. And where is the device associated with Mr. Copeland for that 728 call in relation to the green store at 322 Glen Street Southwest? So again, you see the green store is going to be this green box right here. So that tower and sector is actually the closest tower and sector to the green store there. Um, and it would most likely provide coverage to the green store. And Agent Bernie, with the uh, gap of time we just discussed, if uh, the device was tra traveled from the McDonald's at 150 Cleveland Avenue to 1080 West Peachtree Street and then made, has that call at 8.22 p.m., um, how would you, uh, what are your, you know, how would you, is that uh, possible? Um, Terrible question. Adkins struggling with the wording there. So, so far, this is pretty boring and a little confusing. I have to screenshot the names so I can see the names of the phone numbers they're talking about. What is the last four and who is that call associated with? Oh, okay. It's Monk Tonk. So, Woody's calling Monk Tonk. We already knew that, right? Didn't he testify that he called Monk Tonk? Ending an 8935 associated with? Uh, uh, Mr. Sledge. The next call in sector we have, or tower sector we have, is up here um, near the Williams condo location. That's at 1114 and 1117. So, they have Woody tracked up to Thug's condo after the murder. Remember, the state says they all met at Thug's condo. So, it's going to be a lot of people, apparently tracked around the crime scene in that whole general area and then they meet at Thug's condo. And how many times does, from this window of 11.06 p.m. to 12.07 a.m., does the device associated with Mr. Copeland have some communication with the device associated with Mr. Sledge or Mr. Zachary? Approximately seven times. All right, Demise McMullen is nard. He was in the car and had a gun. Whose device associated did he call? So as you can see here, it's an outgoing call uh, to 3904, a uh, device associated with Mr. Woods. So he called Thug, apparently, minutes after the murder. Yeah, so you can see the Williams condo there. Again, you can see the tower and sector there. It's in uh, close proximity. Again, that tower and sector would be in the central coverage area for that condo. 60% of you aren't subscribed. Come on, hit the subscribe bell. So we see them here, uh, 729 is the first one. And then there's 730 and 7, correct, 731 and 731, uh, both two outgoing calls, 731. My system just shows seconds on it. Um, I just realized that in this time period in 2015, uh, the Verizon seconds are all going to show zero, zero. Oh boy, that's going to be a little confusing, but I get what he's saying. It's just how Verizon sends their records. So these red dots are just all the towers in Atlanta. 
That's not where he was tracked, obviously. And for that 821 outgoing call to the device associated with Kevin Treadwell, where is the device associated with Mr. McMullen in relation to 1080 West Peachy Street, Northwest? Again, you can see the, the towers and sectors used. Uh, I would say that that tower and sector uh, would provide coverage in this general area here that would uh, also include the Williams Tower. Nard going in the vicinity of Thug's condo, but it's not really exact location. So there is a little bit of doubt here that defense lawyers could pick apart. It goes along with the, the snitching side of them saying everyone met at uh, his condo. I just realized this doesn't have Yacht Gotti or Shannon Stilwell on it. So they don't have their phones? That's a huge hole. That's two of the people that were in the car. Shannon being a shooter. They have Yakati on camera at the gas station minutes before, but that's it. All right, that's doo-wop. He was in the car as well. Is that 7.31 and 37 seconds? And we see that's an outgoing call. And we see the tower and the sector used, again, would be one in close proximity to the, the Williams condo on West Peach Street Street. Oh, so he only had two calls, and it was apparently near Thug's condo. But none of his calls are ever near the crime scene. Associated with Justin Cobb at 7.31 p.m. in relation to the device associated with Mr. McMullen at 7.31 p.m. Yeah, so those devices, again, are in the same general area. I knew they were going to go back to that. So yeah, he's trying to tie together Nard and Doo-Wop. We're in the same car and went back to Thug's condo after the murder. All right, so they got Mung Tung's records, obviously, too. Yep, so again, uh, activity, the same device, ending at 89, 39, 35, associated with Mr. Sledge, 7.55, 8.22 p.m. We can see the tower here, and it actually used two different sectors. So it looks like he made some calls, and the calls went to this tower that are apparently indicates he was at Thug's condo, between 7.55 and 8.22, right here. It's a huge general area he could be in. Antonio Sledge wasn't convicted of this murder, but he was at first, remember? And then they dropped the charges. Devaris Bradford now. Um, the first call during this time period is this one down here. It's hard to see, but it says 6.36 p.m. We see the devices in this general area. 6.38, the device is now using this tower and sector here has moved northbound. And then uh, at 6.52, we see the device now using this tower and sector here. Uh, uses that at 6.52. 656, now we're using this tower and sector here, and then eventually it bounces back to this one here at 712, 714, and 719. So they got Bradford or Tuda tracked around the crime scene. Initial call, 636, again down here in the south side of the slide, moves up to the I-2085 interchange area, and then it moves westbound. As you can see, boys, Agent Bernie has some balding going on. If you're like Agent Bernie and experiencing hair loss, you may not be so confident to step outside your door. It's time to get that confidence back and restore your hair with HEMS. HEMS provides you with the most convenient and quality access to a range of hair loss treatments that actually work all from your couch. HEMS has doctor trusted options with clinically proven ingredients like finasteride and minoxidil that can regrow your hair in three to six months. And you have the option to pick from a chewable, an oral, a spray, or a serum treatment, whichever one works the best for you and what you prefer. And I'm telling you guys, this process is so simple and there's no awkward doctor visit where you have to explain that you're balding or your hair is thinning. All you have to do is answer a few questions and a medical provider will determine if the treatment's right for you you and it will be sent to you in a packaging that's discreet and no one will know. Absolutely no insurance is needed and just one low price covers everything. Hims has thousands of trusted subscribers and you could be one of them boys. Listen up if your hair is thinning and you're insecure. Start your free online visit today at hims.com slash cuff. That's h-i-m-s dot com slash cuff. I just want all you guys to be confident if you have thinning hair or if you're losing your hair go do it right now. Love you guys. Here's the rest of the video boys. Results vary based on studies of topical and oral minoxidil and finasteride. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if the prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. First having an activity in this general area here at 652. And then again, it uses this tower, bounces to this tower, bounces back to this tower again. And 719 PM is the device associated with Mr. Bradford in the general area of 330 McDaniel Street. Yes, again, I can't specifically say it, but I would say it's an overlap between those two and that overlap would be again in this general area. Here. So that's definitely not a good look, but still defense lawyers can poke holes in that. Bradford denied a plea deal at one point. I think he's just a severed co-defendant. The next activity is at 724, and we can see the device has moved again from where it was up in the vicinity of the crime scene. Now it's moved south and east over here at 724. Where is the devices associated with Mr. Cobb and the devices associated with Mr. McMullen on these two 7.31 p.m. calls at that time. On slide 15, that 7.31 p.m. call between the device associated with Mr. Bradford and the device associated with Mr. McMullen. I do. Uh, the McMullen device, 7.31 p.m. Again, using a tower and sector in the general vicinity of the Williams Condo. So is the device associated with Mr. McMullen and the device associated with Mr. Bradford at 7.47 p.m. or 7.50 p.m., where are they in relation to one another? 
they're in the same general area uh, around associated address number two. So all these boys are tracked together and then they go back to Thug's condo is the gist of this. They're in the same general area and it all depends on how the jury sees phone records and if they uh, understand all this. I'd say majority of them will. Asked to analyze a phone number ending in 3904 associated with Jeffrey Williams. Here we go. We got Thug's phone records. And what was the time frame that you were requested to analyze? Um, yeah, so I looked at calls between 7.03 and 8.22 uh, here on the 10th. Uh, first call is at 7.03. Uh, we see the tower and sector here used. Um, and we can see uh, this tower was used at 7.03 to 7.31. Do you see a call at 7.03.39? I do. Is that call at 7.03.39 to any devices you were requested to analyze? Yes, it's to the 1990 device associated with uh, Miss Valley Group. And when is the next call after the 7.03.39 call? Um, 7.29 and 30 seconds, uh, an incoming call from the McDaniel, or McMullen device. Sorry. Now, how much of a gap in time is there between 7.03.39 p.m. and 7.29.30 p.m.? Uh, approximately 26 minutes. After that gap in time, who is the device associated with Jeffrey Williams communicating with, and at what time? You have a 703 call again uh, with Sally Greer, and then a 729 uh, incoming call from the McMullen device. So Thug called no one besides his sister 20 minutes before the murder, and he was seemed to be that call. He was near his condo, but then Nard called him at 729, which we saw in his shit too. For all of these calls depicted on this slide, is the device associated with Williams? Uh, where is it in relation to 1080 West Peachtree Street? Again, we can see the tower and sector that's used here. Uh, that would, again, put that phone in, in this general area here. Where does the device associated with Jeffrey Williams travel? Yeah, so the next activity is uh, 733. We see it down here, but kind of press off some of the bottom. So at 733, there's an outgoing call to the Treadwell device. Again, uh, the device associated with Mr. Williams is in the general area of the associated address. Now we're at 733. Uh, how long after is that call? Uh, approximately two minutes. Um, is that a small, average, or large distance to travel in two minutes? That's a large distance. Um, can you explain for the jury some, uh, what do you make of that, or how do you explain that? Yeah, so again, uh, between this tower and the tower used on the previous slide, I think it's about seven to eight kilometers. Again, that's about four and a half, five miles approximately. Don't hold me to the math there. Um, and, and that's about two minutes in between those two calls. Um, what's, uh, in discussing this with uh, T-Mobile folks and other folks within our industry, if you go back to page 27, um, what we believe happened uh, is a opposing objection to confrontation. Yeah, yeah, he can't be yapping about why he thinks Thug teleported. Camping on a tower. I have. Can you explain what that means? Yeah, so again, here's a as well. Overruled. So the judge is letting him talk about it. Here we go. And uh, in the network, when your phone is on, it's scanning the environment, and then a, uh, the phone picks the tower and sector uh, with the best signal. Um, sometimes that device will finish a call and just go exactly to the next call. Or maybe you ended a call because there was an incoming call and a tower, etc. was already assigned and being used by the device. And that device then continues to use that tower and sector. Um, that would be a term of an example of the tower camping or holding on to a tower. So again, 733, uh, we see the call using this tower and sector um, in the area associated near the area of the associated address number two. We have that call at 733, 743, and one at 755. Again, using all the same tower and sector. And then we see the device start to move northbound. 7.58, it uses a tower and sector in this area. And then eventually at 8 o'clock, the device has continued to move further. Forward. So again, um, first call, 7.33. Last call, start to move in the northbound general area. How many of those five calls are between the device associated with Jeffrey Williams and the device associated with Kevin Treadwell? Uh, three. Kevin Treadwell is OG Bentley, who apparently got rid of the guns after the murder. And Thug called him three times in, in that hour or whatever. Who is the device associated with Mr. McMullen speaking with? At this time, um, this is a call again to the device associated with Mr. Tridwell. And is the call we just discussed with Defendant Williams' phone? How much time is apart between those two calls? So this one's at 7:50, and the one associated with Mr. Williams, that call is at 7:55. Associated with McMullen and the devices associated with Defendant Williams in that time frame, 7:50 or 7:55. Again, the same general area. We see um, 7:50. Obviously, the device is in this general area, and the same on page 28. So they're trying to tie together Nard, who was in the murder vehicle, and Thug were together. Well, they're in the same car or not, or in following each other in two different cars after the murder. Using that scale, how far is the distance between 35 Oaks Drive Southwest, Atlanta, Georgia, and 150 Cleveland Avenue Southwest? So the distance between this point here at 2 and this point here at M, which is the McDonald's straight line distance, is probably around a mile. And Asia Bernie, have you driven vehicles before? I have. <laughs> Can you tra travel 0.8 miles in 10 minutes? You can. So trying to nail at him that they also met at McDonald's, remember? 
Woody snitch they met at McDonald's and all that. You know, remember he picked up uh, Lil D from McDonald's? He snitched in the interview saying that. These phone records corroborate that. Yep, so again, uh, here's that, that crime scene. We're looking south of that on 85. You have the, uh, you know, the associated address, Copeland's girlfriend here. The device at 724 and 725, again, puts that device in this general area here, somewhere around the vicinity of that, that other additional residence. Oh, okay. So at 724, actually, he was at his girlfriend's house two minutes after the murder. Analyze phone activity near the McDonald's at 150 Cleveland Avenue. I was. And what was the time frame you were requested to analyze phones in relation to that address? Yeah, you can see that listed here, 735 to 8.48 p.m. on the 10th. And we see um, several devices that have that. So we kind of go through those. The first device is this red device, um, 6080. That's the device associated to Mr. McMullen. Um, we have this silver device here, um, ending in 8008. That's the device associated with Mr. Bradford. Uh, device associated with Mr. Zachary. And the 2643 um, device uh, located, uh, associated with Mr. Treadwell using this tower and sector here. Then the closest tower and sector to the McDonald's, obviously, is this one here. We have that 2643, again, associated with Mr. Treadwell. It's kind of this purple device having those activities. Kind of cut off down here is the 5991 device uh, associated with Mr. Copeland, again, using this tower and sector here. So they don't have Shannon Stowe or Yakati tracked at all. That's a huge hole. Two of the people in the fucking car and two of the people in the courtroom for the murder. To analyze multiple incidents in regards to cell phone historical cell site data other than the January 10, 2015 murder of Donald Thomas. I was. So now he's going to get into uh, Lil Wayne bus shooting tracking. All right, so we got Quindary Zachary, Jimmy Winfrey, Antonio Sledge, Nard, and Greer's phones tracked. Look at this cluster. This is so hard to understand all these dots and shit. All these dots are just towers. You don't even really have to worry about them too much. You just have to worry about the towers that actually got phone calls right here, all of them near the vault, which was the venue that Lil Wayne was at. Or I think it was a bar or something. I don't know. It was a nightclub maybe that Lil Wayne was being paid to be at. All right, Brian Steele up for cross. Jeffrey Williams' uh, cell phone was not in Atlanta during that date in those times. Is that fair to say, according to the records? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Thug wasn't even in the state during the Lil Wayne bus shooting, so. And his device would have been in the uh, city of Baton Rouge, state of Louisiana. Yeah, there's two different devices. One's the YSL 8553, that one's in Baton Rouge. And then there's another one, 2920, uh, with a 504 area code. That one's in Miami. Dealing with the April 26, 2015 date, how much contact Jeffrey Williams' phone had with any of the other phones. And by that, I mean Mr. Winfrey, Mr. Zachary, um, Mr. You can help me here if you want to. <laughs> um, McMullen. Go ahead. Zachary, Sledge, all of those. Um, no, for this incident, the only uh, toll analysis, meaning who called who at what date and time, is listed in the report itself. Do you remember telling the jurors before a, a long break that there was a call at approximately 7.29 p.m. January 10, 2015, from the device or the number that we associate or the record we associate with Demise McMullen's phone to Mr. Jeffrey Williams. I do, sir. Records. And they told the jurors, I believe, that it was a 40-second phone call. Do you remember that? And if you don't... I do. Okay. Whose records did you use to get that duration of that um, call? So that came from uh, the calling party, which was Demise McMullen, the McMullen phone. Okay. Did you, and if you need to see it, we're going to show it to you, did you ever analyze the records associated with Jeffrey Williams on that exact uh, date and time of that call. Did you I did. And tell the jurors what um, the number of seconds that call shows on that, on Jeffrey Williams' um, records, if you don't mind. Yeah, I believe it's 17 seconds. So the times are different? Do you know why on the T-Mobile record, 17, and on the Verizon record of Mr. McMullen, 47? And if you do, just say yes or no, and then I'd like you to explain. Yes, I do. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, again, the calling party was the Verizon phone number uh, ending in 6080 associated with Mr. McMullen. Um, and again, that's a 47 seconds. And then the records on the receiving side uh, was the device associated with Mr. Williams, 3904 T-Mobile record. That showed 17 seconds for T-Mobile. 47 for Verizon, 17 for T-Mobile. The difference is uh, when you place a call, each provider keeps records slightly different meaning uh, they're not mandated to, in their duration time, that it's only talk time or only time in which voice is transmitted. Verizon keeps their records for what's called seizure time and elapsed time. So seizure time is the time I hit the green button so that call is routed through, sometimes it takes a while, and then the ring on the other side, and then the voice conversation altogether. So the total time from when the device associated with Mr. McMullen hit the button until the call, until that call was terminated, Verizon tracked that whole time as 40, 47 seconds, thanks sir. Um, uh, T-Mobile, on the other hand, only keeps their records for the time you talk. Talk with you about the 733.14 
outgoing call from the records of Mr. that we're calling associated with Mr. Jeffrey Williams to the Kelvin Treadwell. You see that? What I do. Member of state says OG Bentley got rid of the guns. You explain that there's um, four miles between where the cell tower that was used at the 731 uh, 17 p.m. call to the 733 14 call, which is on the screen. Is that? Yeah, I think I said between eight, or I measured it with uh, just general measurement. I think I found like eight or nine kilometers, which again, I estimated to be between four and five miles. Did you drive the distance from around the cell tower that's on the page before at 731.17 to the cell tower at 733.14? I have not, no. Did you Google map it? And if that's you use other device, that's fine. But to see the number of miles between those two locations? No, I just did an estimate, a uh, straight line distance estimate between those two towers. When you say straight line, like a like a bird may be able to fly? Or yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, straight line from one to the other, not going along the roads. How many times? in all these records that you have, did Jeffrey Williams' device ever communicate, being the initiation of a communication with Mr. Demise McMullen's device? Um, I'd have to reference the, uh, the, the call logs. Uh, I won't specifically remember any direct calls to or from an individual. I'd have to reference my notes. Steele's trying to point out that Woody and Nard always initiated phone calls with Thug. It was never Thug calling them. Were you ever told or given records for a second or multiple cellular devices that are associated with Mr. Copeland? I don't recall another device associated with Mr. Copeland. You were just giving records for one device? I, I believe so. I, I mean... Uh, so let's see. The state showed that he was at the green store, but he admitted to having more than just one phone. So defense is just casting doubt on where Kenneth was. Defense wants to cast out and try to show that Woody could have killed Donovan Thomas. It's been real nice without Miss Love objecting everything when a defense lawyer is trying to get cross-examination going. In reviewing the records, all we can say is that the device, again, which chooses the tower in the sector with the best signal, uh, the strongest best signal, at 8.07, it shows this tower that was out here as the best signal. And then at 8.0, all these other ones, it shows this tower. So all we can say is potentially line of sight that this tower, which is slightly larger than this tower located here. They vary, obviously. I mean, you're, you're telling us that. It's not GPS coordinate. Here I am. It's a range, fair to say. Correct. We know the tower and sector where the device is. So again, a general area of where and the device it, is. And it could be, I guess, miles away. Is that? And if I'm saying something wrong, just please correct me. Um, it could be, depending upon the towers in the area. Obviously, um, more towers, the closer uh, the phones are um, to those towers. The f towers that are farther apart, the more range those towers could be away from. You see where the crime scene is? I do. Does Mr. Copeland's cell phone ever contact a cell phone tower that, in your expert opinion, could encompass that crime scene? Um, yes, this 7, 28, and 45 seconds, this one here. Um, again, we see this, this device was a sprint device. So we see the towers that are listed here around the crime scene. So this device here, uh, which was used at 7, 28 p.m., um, you can see that here. That coverage could potentially cover uh, the crime scene and the you know the other location of the green store. That's something I also noticed. Just because the state says he was at the green store, the records show he could also be at the crime scene based off what this guy just said. Is there any time on page 12 that, Mr. it's gonna be the same question, Mr. Copeland's device is at or around the crime scene? Well, using a tower associated with and encompassing that crime scene. Yeah, we have this call here at 9.52 p.m. You can see uh, the towers right underneath this box for the crime scene. So again, uh, that's in the vicinity of the crime scene for the device in this general area at 9.52. Treadwell, do you remember using that name? I do, yes, sir. Can you tell the ladies and gentlemen jury when Kelvin Treadwell's cellular telephone records show that he is using a tower that is in the vicinity of the Jeffrey Williams condominium. So again, his number ends in 2643, the device associated with him. Uh, and I don't uh, I don't see that. So that device must not have uh, been in that area during that period. So OG Bentley phone was not tracked at Thug's condo? January 12, 2015, approximately 1.30 in the afternoon, when um, an Infinity rental car was returned to the airport, the Atlanta airport. Were you ever given that information? I don't recall that, no. Why wouldn't they look at that just to really hammer at him that Thug rented that car and then returned it? Like track him to the airport returning the rental car? They have no footage of him getting the rental car. They only have his signature that got the rental car. Is Jeffrey Williams' uh, records have him on the way traveling to Miami, Florida? At uh, what time? 1.30ish. Yeah, so there's activity around 1.30 a.m. on the 11th in Atlanta. And then the next activity outside of Atlanta is approximately 4.38 a.m. So someone else returned the rental car, not Thug, because Thug was on the way to Miami. All right, Doug Weinstein, Yacht Gotti, I'm sure he's going to point out that Yacht Gotti was not on any of this. The shaded arc solely indicates the general direction of radio frequency signal, correct? That's correct. Because those edges that you show there, while in the illustration, they seem to be a hard edge. That's kind of theoretical. They're not exactly a hard edge. Is that correct? That's correct. There's no line painted on the concrete that says at this point you're going to switch from this sector to this sector. It's, again, it's 
kind of fuzzy at the boundaries. It could be 118 degrees, it could be 123 degrees, it could vary. Right, because radio, the radio, even if you have a directional antenna, the radio signals don't just hard cut off at a certain point or necessarily extend exactly to that point, right? That's correct. Okay, we can take that down. Thank you. Yeah, we're getting the general area based on the information, meaning the tower and the sector. Uh, and those antennas in that sector. But again, you don't know where the device is. You just know the antenna that's being uh, used by that cell phone, correct? correct. Just casting down. Like so again, yeah, if you go out two to two and a half miles plus the arc, that could include eight to nine miles. Again, I, I don't Square know. Miles. Yeah, I, I'd have to review it, but that doesn't seem too off. Okay, thank you. I don't have any further questions. So the area is pretty big. I mean, it's miles long. Just casting down on phone tower records. You were not asked to consult to do a drive test in 2016, correct? I was not. I was not involved in the case until, again, at the earliest 2022, I think. And you haven't seen any drive tests that may have been performed back at that time, correct? I do not. No. Okay. Also, you were not asked to consider any uh, cell phone records of my client, Diamante Kendrick, correct? Um, not during this time period, no. Not, let, let me clarify, make sure we're clear. Uh, in that January 10, January 11 time frame of 2015, you were not asked to consider any of the cell phone records. I did not. No. Thank you. Why? They're charging him with the murder. Why would they not do that? Initiate contact. So you're only asking about, did the device associated with Mr. Williams, 3904, initiate or place an outgoing call to any of these names? Mm. Yeah, or a text message. Okay. Uh, well, we would only have calls in this case, um, I believe. And... Uh, there were no outgoing calls from uh, the 3904 to Mr. Copeland's uh, 5991. Number associated with Mr. Williams and then initiating it to the number associated with Mr. McMullen. So there's uh, only two contacts, again, during this time period, 729 on the 10th to 6.30 a.m. on the 11th. Only two contacts. Both of those contacts were the device associated with Mr. McMullen calling the device associated with Mr. Williams, the 3904. So Mr. Williams, according to the records, the phone associated with Mr. Williams never initiated contact. He's trying to point out the one-sided friendships here. All right, state's redirect here. He's going to try to shit on everything the defense just pretty much did. Do you recall being asked a number of questions about if the district attorney's office ever asked you to plot X or check Y? On cross-examination? Uh, yes. If any defense counsel had asked you before testifying here today to look into or plot any of those matters they addressed, would you have looked into it before testifying today? I would have, yes. Why would defense lawyers have to do that? It's their fucking job. And have you either directly or as part of an investigation physically located someone based off call detail records in a non-criminal case? Ever. In a non-criminal case? Such as a natural disaster or something like that. I have. And did you, in those cases, rely on call detail records like the nature you used for the murder of Donovan Thomas on January 10, 2015? I have, yes. Um, and the most recent being um, the Bureau just used... Your Honor, I, the state feels given some of the cross-examination, it is relevant. Not sustained. I'm not going to let him get into that. So clearly they were going to talk about FBI using CDR records to locate people from the hurricanes in Florida. Historical cell site tower analysis, reliable. They are. Agent Brady, can you explain to the jury how you're able to state that historical cell site analysis to include tower information is a reliable method to use? Yeah, we... Obje objection, vague. Ever ruled. You may answer, Agent Brady. Um, yeah, again, you know, these records, you got to remember, they're business records associated with the company. So they use them every day to optimize their network, right? Where they're dropped calls, where are lots of people placing calls, right? We need to use more towers. But as far as uh, law enforcement's use, I mean, we use them every single day um, to locate, uh, kidnap kids, missing kids, runaways, both in the criminal context and the non-criminal context. Uh, you know, the last time that we used it in the, la the last time I used them in a non-criminal context was the hurricane relief through North Carolina. Uh, Bolstering. What was the other one? Bolstering. Bolstering. Um, overruled and sustained. That was pretty much it for day 143. The rest of the day was just like four officers testifying to shootings that were just very boring. No big details or anything like that. Hit subscribe, don't send a membership. Love you guys. Peace out. Diamond.